Hello. In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Suppose f and g are both Riemann integrable functions on a comma b. Then the function f plus g defined by f plus g of x equals f of x plus g of x is also Riemann integrable on a comma b. And the integral of f plus g is equal to the integral of f plus the integral of g. Now, before we get into proving this theorem, let's first remind ourselves of some things. Let's consider our closed interval, a comma b. Well then, a partition of a comma b is a collection of non-overlapping closed intervals whose union is a comma b. So for example, this collection of closed intervals would be a partition of a comma b. And we might label these intervals i1, i2, and so on. We may also label the endpoints of these intervals x0, x1, x2, and so on. So in general, each subinterval ii is given by xi minus 1, comma xi. Now a tacked partition is when we select a point from each of these subintervals. And let's say that the points we select are these. The points that we select are what we call tags, and we might label the tags t1, t2, and so on. So this would be an example of a tagged partition of a comma b. And we symbolize it by a letter with a dot on top. And the collection is a collection of ordered pairs. And the first coordinate of an ordered pair is the subinterval. The second coordinate is the tag belonging to the subinterval. So this would be the tagged partition given above. Now, the norm of a partition is the length of the longest subinterval of the partition. So the norm of the partition that we have here would be the length of the subinterval i2. And the way that we symbolize the norm of a partition is like this, with double vertical bars. So now let's talk about the definition of a Riemann sum. Given that f is a function from a comma b to r, and p is any tagged partition of a comma b, we'll say that the subintervals of the tagged partition looks like this, and the tags look like this. Well then, the Riemann sum of f corresponding to p is given by this formula. So really, what's going on here is we're adding the areas of a bunch of rectangles. The width of each rectangle is given by the length of each subinterval, while the height of each rectangle is given by the output value of the function at each of the tags. So that's really what this is. And as you can imagine, if our function dips below the x-axis, then there's a possibility that the output value through one of the tags is negative. And so in that case, we could interpret the area of that rectangle as negative, right? So that's really what this Riemann sum tells us. So that's the definition. So now, let's talk about the definition of the Riemann integral. So what does it mean to say that f and g are Riemann integrable on a comma b? It means the following. To say that f is Riemann integrable on a comma b means that there exists a real number l such that for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero such that for all tag partitions p of a comma b whose norm is less than delta, we have that the absolute value of the Riemann sum minus l is less than epsilon. Now, we have proven that this real number l which satisfies this condition is unique, and we denote L as the integral from A to B of F. 
So we're going to replace L with this notation. So this is what it means for f to be Riemann integrable on a comma b. And similarly, to say that g is Riemann integrable on a comma b means the same thing as this. It's just instead of dealing with the function f, we're dealing with the function g. So we just replace everywhere we see an f with g. Now our whole goal is to prove that f plus g is Riemann integrable on a comma b, and that the value of its integral is equal to this guy. And by definition of the Riemann integral, that means the following. It means the same thing that we have above. It's just instead of dealing with the function f, we're dealing with the function f plus g. So that's why we have f plus g written here. And since we're claiming that the integral of f plus g is the integral of f plus the integral of g, that's why we have integral of f plus integral of g written here. Okay, so now let's get into proving this theorem. Now the whole goal is to prove that f plus g is Riemann integrable on a comma b, and the value of its integral is equal to this guy. And to prove that, all we have to do is prove that this statement is true. And since we're trying to prove a statement about every epsilon greater than zero, let's give ourselves an arbitrary epsilon greater than zero. From here, we want to find a delta greater than zero such that this is true. And we're going to use the fact that f and g are both Riemann integrable on a comma b. Now, since f is Riemann integrable on a comma b, this means we know that this statement is true. And this statement works for every positive real number. So in particular, it must work for the positive real number epsilon over 2. So taking this to be epsilon over 2, we have that there exists a positive real number, I'll call delta 1, such that for all tag partitions of a comma b whose norm is less than delta 1, we have that the absolute value of the Riemann sum minus the integral of f is less than epsilon over 2. And similarly, we know that g is Riemann integrable on a comma b, which means we know that this statement is true, where we're replacing f with g instead. And since this statement works for every positive real number, well then again, it must work for the positive real number epsilon over 2. So that means that there exists a positive real number I'll call delta 2, such that for all tag partitions p of a comma b, whose norm is less than delta 2, we have that the absolute value of the Riemann sum minus the integral of g is less than epsilon over 2. Now remember, we want to find a delta greater than zero such that this is true. The claim is, if we take delta to be the minimum of delta 1 and delta 2, then this will be true. So let's take delta to be the minimum of delta 1 and delta 2. And from here, with this choice of delta, we proceed to prove that this statement is true. And to prove the statement, let's give ourselves an arbitrary tag partition P of a comma B, whose norm is less than delta. From here, we want to show that this inequality is true. And the idea is that we can show that the Riemann sum of f plus g with this partition is equal to the Riemann sum of f with this partition plus the Riemann sum of g with this partition. And so let's show that. Now, by definition of a Riemann sum, what is the Riemann sum of f plus g with this partition?
it would be this. But then, by definition of the function f plus g, we can re-express f plus g of ti as f of ti plus g of ti. But then we are going to distribute xi minus xi minus 1 across this parentheses. So we're going to get f of ti times xi minus xi minus 1 plus g of ti times xi minus xi minus 1. So we have this. Well then, a property of summations tells us we can split up this sum into two sums. This is really the sum from i equals 1 to n of this, plus the sum from i equals 1 to n of this. And then by definition of a Riemann sum, this is precisely the Riemann sum of f with p. This is precisely the Riemann sum of g with p. And so this shows that the Riemann sum of f plus g is equal to the Riemann sum of f plus the Riemann sum of g. And now we're in a position to show that this inequality is true. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace the Riemann sum of f plus g with the Riemann sum of f plus the Riemann sum of g. And we're going to distribute the minus sign across this parentheses. And from here, we're just going to swap these two guys around. And so now let's apply the triangle inequality. The triangle inequality tells us that the absolute value of this guy is less than or equal to the absolute value of this guy plus the absolute value of this guy. But then let's go back to the fact that P is a tag partition of A comma B, such that the norm of P is less than delta. Since delta is the minimum of delta 1 and delta 2, well then the norm of P must be less than both delta 1 and delta 2. Since the norm of P is less than delta 1, it follows that this inequality is true. So this guy is less than epsilon over 2. And also we know that the norm of P is less than delta 2, so this inequality is true as well. So, this guy is less than epsilon over 2, and this guy is less than epsilon over 2. Therefore, their sum must be less than epsilon over 2 plus epsilon over 2, which is equal to epsilon. And so this shows that this guy is less than epsilon, which is exactly what we wanted to show. And so we have proven that this statement is true, which proves that f plus g is a Riemann integrable on a comma b, and the value of the integral is equal to the integral of f plus the integral of g. And so this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.